Hello and welcome. My name is Tracy Fitch and today I'm going to be showing you how to make several items that you can use with your students with CBI when you are assessing them as well as just working with them on a daily basis. So the things that we are going to be making today are a felt presentation board that you can attach visual targets to, the visual targets with the Velcro attached, a slinky book, homemade swirly mats, shape cutouts um, to use with swirly mats on a light box, and a calendar matching activity or game. All right, so let's get started. The sixth item we're gonna make today is the calendar matching game. The items we need for this activity are very simple. We need a child's calendar. I like to get one that would be good for a um, boy or a girl. Um, and then I also you will also need a pair of scissors. And then you will also want to contain that activity once we get it done is a gallon size bag as well as a either sandwich or snack size bag to put the mini pieces in. And the last item that we are going to make today is this calendar activity, which is more geared towards phase two and higher students when you're assessing them. So I just got these really inexpensively at the Dollar Tree 2020 calendars. I have a Trolls one and a Marvel Superheroes one. Um, so let's go ahead and cut into, so what the other items that you will need are a pair of scissors, um, the calendar itself, and then to store them, you may want a small baggie, a sandwich baggie, this is a snack size, and a full size baggie. If you can get the giant ones, they're even better, but I think these will fit fine in a gallon size bag. But if you have a larger calendar, you may wanna get the like super size um, bags to store them. So first things first, we are just going to get into this calendar. I like to have one that is kind of, you know, girl, you know, oriented and one that is, you know, boy oriented, um, but it completely depends. Here's a nice piece of um, card, um, of uh, cardboard that we could have used to put um, the felt on earlier. So definitely save, whenever I get good cardboard, I always save it. All right, so what we're gonna do is, is that we are going to use the images on the back. So we're just gonna cut this out. And we're just gonna cut out the small images on the back. My scissors really need some goo gone when I'm done with all these activities. Cutting things with stickiness to them has really made it difficult. All right, so we're just gonna cut these out. And you can make them as perfectly cut as you want them to be. But I'm not gonna worry about the edges. I'm just gonna snip them apart like so. This is probably the easiest of all the um, materials that we are going to be making today. All right, so we have all of those cut out. And then we are just gonna go through, and I am just going to tear these very carefully. Of course, you don't wanna hurt the count, the, the image, but tearing them is the easiest way to do it. Cutting just takes too long. I don't know if in our field, time is money so much as time is just precious. We have very little of it. All right, and then once you do the others, these are already cut out for you. Okay, 
also, that is done. We're not going to do the superhero one, but just for fun, I'll show you. It looks like this on the front, and these are what all of the smaller images look like. Um, in my kit right now, I have a Frozen one, Elite, a Sophia, the first one, and I think a Transformers one in my kit. All right, so then you have all of your little mini images, okay? So what I like to do is I like to go through and find some that are similar. Um, and those are gonna be the hard ones. So like these two both have black in them. So you kind of want to have an idea. That one's purple, this one's purple, or maybe some that have the same character. So like this one has the two main characters on it. Is there another one with the two main characters on it? Hmm. These aren't as similar. Let's see. Are there any on here? Oh, dark. That have all of them. So you just want to find some that are similar. But to start with, I like to find ones that are drastically different. So I might do this black one and this like bright pink one, for instance. Okay. And you'll start with two and you'll show the student this image. You'll have them look at it and then you'll provide them with the two smaller ones. Okay. Um, I like to, I don't know if you can see that. You would want to put it below, but you can't really see it in the things so I'm going to show you here. So you give them the two and then you'd have them choose which one matches. Now this one's easy because it's black and it's pink. Okay. Okay, and easy is relative. It really depends on the student, but you want to start easy and see how they can do. Um, and then if they can do that one, then you could switch to one that you think is a little bit harder. So maybe let's go with this cloud guy here. And you'll want to give some that are like similar colors. So this one is yellow. This one is yellow and orange. And where's Cloud Guy? Here it is. Okay. So these are multicolored, right? So you could put any of these three that all have rainbow colors on them and ask them to find the one that matches. You could start out with just two. Um, and see how they do, and then you can add a third, okay? You could also do it, like I said, where you've got the two purple ones, you know, make it a little bit harder because the background color is the same. They have to look at the characters, and so you might ask them. Let's say we're doing one of the purple sheets. Okay, let's say we're doing this one. Let's say that they have their choice of, um, this one, this one, and this one. All relatively similar. And let's say they pick this one instead of that one, which is the right answer. You'd be like, okay, let's take this one out and just give them two and say, okay, who do you see in this picture? And ask them to describe what they see. I don't know the names of these characters. I saw the first Trolls movie, but I can't remember um, any of the Trolls names. Um, and I haven't seen the new one. Um, but they would say he's blue and he's sparkly and has white hair, whatever. Um, and you'd be like, well, who in these images is light blue and sparkly and has white hair? Um, and they point to this and be like, okay, so this one is the same. So you'd want to talk about those elements that are in the image. Another defining element is what is floating around him in this picture. All these little colored jewels. Which one of these pictures has little colored jewels floating around on it? And it would be that one. So you could talk about the defining features of this particular image or the particular character. So we're talking about complexity. Obviously we're doing complexity of array. We're doing complexity of background and um, you know of the background and everything. We're doing novelty. We're doing distance. We're doing a little bit of functional vision. We're doing size. Um, 
because CVI, if they don't have other ocular conditions in addition to it, um, size doesn't make a difference. Having an image bigger doesn't necessarily make it easier for them to see or easier for them to interpret it. So they should be able to see this just as clearly as they can see this if CVI is their only condition. Um, so that would also be something that you're testing. So with an activity like this for a mid to high phase two, moving into phase three child, um, you're able to check lots of things. Like I said, you're able to check novelty. You're able to check, do things like, it's just like with a search and find book. Like you give them an image, any image, and you just say, instead of pointing, you could do it different ways. You could give them the image and say, okay, what do you see? Have them try to interpret it right off the bat on their own completely. If they have trouble with it, say, okay, do you see the words on the page? Do you see the characters? How many characters, how many trolls are on this page? What colors are the trolls? So then you start asking them questions about what they're seeing. Um, and that's the same way you do with the search and find book. If you're doing a search and find book, this one's more complex. Um, if you're doing a search and find book, you could say, what do you see? And then say, okay, can you find Poppy? And try to see if they can find the main character. If they can't do it that way, then you would say, okay, well, let's find this. Let's find that. Can you see this? And then ask them specific questions. So that's just the way you can use this activity. So like I said, you're testing complexity of object. Um, can they see in two dimensional? Um, complexity of array, you're doing novelty, you're doing a little bit of distance. Um, and then also like you're, you can practice like, is it better for them eye level? Can they see it when it's down here? Because if it's on flat on the table, then we're talking lower fields. You're also doing a little bit of fields. So an activity like this, you can cover lots of areas of the, of the CBI range. And like I said, you can just store it in your Ziploc bag. Sorry, I have to get it all the way open. That might help. So I think this will fit just right into the Ziploc bag. And then I'm gonna take all of my little images, gather them up and put them into the little mini, I think this is the snack size Ziploc bag, and then just store them together. Put it in there with that, and then you've got your calendar activity, matching, matching activity, and you are good to go. Um, this one also has a medium size version on the back as well, so you could always incorporate that in as well if you wanted to. Okay, so the items that we made today are, we made ourselves a Velcro um, felt board with a red outline to use with items that we made as well with Velcro on them to attach. So we made our board and items to use on the board. We also made a mini slinky book that did center right and left with the large red slinky. We made a binder that has a shape cut out to use against a swirly mat or and a light box, as well as a felt, a piece of felt that we can use also as a board. We made two quart size swirly mats um, with some confetti and foam um, beads, as well as a large size one with glitter and confetti in it. And then we also made a calendar activity. So I hope you got so many great ideas and things that you can put into your CVI kit. And this is a great starting off point for you of things that you can use for kids all the way from a early phase one, all the way up to a moving into phase three child. All right, so thank you for watching. Goodbye.